Let's talk about the freaking tail series, baby. Simply put, I love it. I love it so bloody much. I say that every time I make a video even remotely about it, but it's for a good reason. And as someone who's played nearly every release, because, you know, Japan gets special privileges and my wallet deserves to live a happy life, it's safe to say that I have a pretty wide range of experience with my favorite video game franchise, which only begs the question, how do the individual games compare to one another? With me being as biased as possible, that is. Ladies and gentlemen, best boys and best girls, it's finally time. As another loser on the internet who can't shut up about games he loves, I think I'm finally ready to tackle the big boys in a countdown. This order has been flip-flopping, pitter-pattering up and down and all around, but after many self-debates and crying, I think I'm finally satisfied with this order. It's gonna be really controversial, but I'm ready. Got my comfort food and everything. I gave this list a lot of thought, I've got a lot to talk about, and I'm just itching to get into things, so without any further ado, let's get down and dirty with my top 10 favorite Tales games. Let the gushing... commence! <laughs> After a bit of a rant. For starting a video on many of my favorite games, it's kind of strange for me to say that I'm not a fan of Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World in some capacity. However, at the same time, I don't think I can say that I hate this one. In fact, the more I think about it, I can say it's an I out of 10. Enough for me to warrant putting it on this list. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna complain about my problems with it. That being said... <gasps> The protagonist sucks, and he was a punk, and Brad Toss is a jerk. Both are unlikable to the very end, and by then I just can't be bothered. This story starts off interesting, but actually drags and becomes a complete mess. Cutting their sonic with six levels of pacing, and they're not very good for your information. You earn no gold from enemies unless they're human or bosses. What the heck? There's no world map. What the heck? You can't level up the OG Symphonia cast in battle. What the heck? This Discount Pokemon, aka the monster system, was dumb. Monsters just couldn't fight thanks to the dummy eye and awful stats. The OG Symphonia cast are much better, but can't freaking level up. And finally, the combat system is so slow. Like, how do you downgrade from the game your sequel up? I don't understand. Ah, <sighs> I feel so much better. This game definitely gave me a lot of trouble playing through it, but the thing is, I played through it all the way. That's because there's a lot I actually like about this game. For as much as I hate Emil, I like Marta, and feel that she had so much better development than anyone gives her credit for. If anything, she doesn't do a 180 at the very end of the game, so give her some credit. Out of the new characters this game introduced, she was the best. I also like how they nailed the personalities of the OG cast, except for Lloyd, but happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Throughout the story, they acted like their developed selves after the first game, and it was great to see, especially my son Zelos. A boy? It's been too long. The music was also really good, like why does nobody talk about this? Minus a few missing tracks, this game remasters all the music from the first game and they sound better a lot of the time. Even this game's original track to some bops. I mean, are you listening to this game's battle theme? Oh my gosh. Overall, I can say this game attempts to be good and at the very least has personality. That's why I put this game on the list and not Hearts R because when I played that game, I was so bored that I couldn't even finish it. Dawn of the New World is definitely finishable, which says a lot to me. Simply put, it's a good game, but not a good Tales game. <laughs> All right, on to more positive stuff. Tales of Legendia is a beloved entry, right? This is another controversial one, only followed by Dawn of the New World, I'd say, but even that's arguable. Still, I have to say, I loved Legendia. In a guilty pleasure sort of way? Kinda, however, I do think that this is a good Tales game, all things considered. Not a great one, but I enjoyed my time with this one more than I thought I would. The story is severely underrated. It's one of the more mature yet weirder ones in the franchise, but super memorable because of all this. There were a lot of funny, dramatic, happy, sad, and hype moments across the game, making for one engaging narrative. A lot of that, of course, is thanks to the cast. Minus one character who actually almost ruined the story as a whole. Oh, I hate so much. This is one of my favorite collections of personalities that don't get nearly the amount of love they deserve. And while this game has definitely aged, I love the different character designs, voice acting, and especially, especially that soundtrack. Holy crap. My favorite for the longest time, this game's sound is so different and high in quality at the same time. That's thanks to the new, phenomenal composer, Goshina. Goshina? You go, Goshina. Great story, greater characters, and legit top-tier music. It looks like this game's set up to be something special. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. We were so close. So, um, yeah. This game has random encounters. Why is that again? Because this game was developed by a different team? Don't give me that crap. And we're on a 2D plane again? Why? Not to mention the battle system is so button mashy. They really dumbed down the quality jump into 3D Symphonia introduced that required strategy and fast paced action inputs. This is 
a guilty pleasure of mine. <laughs> I don't know, man. I enjoyed playing as the different characters, and there was a lot made specifically for the 2D action. It isn't the best combat by far. It's actually one of the worst, but I didn't hate it at all. Far from it, actually. And I never felt like quitting the game, so there's also that. I'm not even gonna try to defend this. I know it's not good, but if anything, it was fun. It probably won't be to you, though. Not even gonna front, but it's my countdown, and I'm gonna be as biased as I want to be, so yeah. I like Legendia's battle system. Button mashing was fun. Throwing enemies was fun. The bosses were fun? Sometimes, yeah. Whatever. It's on the list. It's my list. I'm putting it on the list. Number nine, Legendia. What are you gonna do about it? Whoa, wait. No, no, I was kidding. Legendia's different, and while it's not for everyone, not even a little, it's a game I can't help but enjoy. <laughs> Just getting all the controversial ones out of the way, aren't I? Well, believe it or not, I consider everything from here on out to be at least amazing in my eyes. What? Zestiria? Amazing? I must be losing it. Listen, I've been losing it since March 4th, 2014, but hey, we've been in it for this long. My feelings for this game have been fluctuating for so long, but I can now say without any outside influence that Zestiria is a really, really great time. While it is an experiment in many ways and not an ideal starting point in the slightest, there's a lot to love about this entry. Like the story. This game gets a lot of flack for it, but like, did you play the whole way through? It's cliche and tropey at first, but gives so many twists the further you go in, making for a bit of a different tale spot that still fits in the series incredibly well the further you go in. The cast was aight though. Most of them were okay, but we did have some great characters. One great character. Edna. Being the first game on PS4 hardware, it looks great. The colors especially are so rich and the game gives off such a grand scale in terms of the environments and creatures that inhabit it. It's akin to something like Xenoblade. And fellas, sex is great, but like that Zestiria original soundtrack? I can still say without a doubt it's my favorite in the series. No wonder too because Goshina and Matoi Sakuraba, the standard composer for the series, work together on it. And my dudes? It like really shows. The songs are spectacles to behold and sound like they could be straight out of a movie score. Gameplay's a bit on the janky side though. It's functional and once you get the hang of it can be pretty fun, but it's definitely not as tight as Grace's F, the game this combat system is based off of. Also, the camera can just go die. What am I, what am I looking at people? I've said it plenty of times and I'll say it again, the world map is the best of the series and because of this, I find myself enjoying the exploration side much more than the combat, which is weird, but because said combat isn't bad to begin with, I I can appreciate the different kind of enjoyment I get from Zestiria. This game may not seem all that great, but give it the time of day and you'll be surprised on how much fun this game can truly provide. If anything, just, just play for Edna. I'm not even joking, Edna's so good, guys. You ever play a game and just feel so split on it? Like, did I love this? Did I hate it? I'm, I don't know. Well, a prime example for me is, say it with me, Tales of Grace's F. What an experience this one gave me, and for the longest time, I could not tell if it was a good one or a bad one. Now, after playing it two times through, understanding the combat, and just taking my time to truly grasp what this game has to offer, I just want to say, I love Grace's F. And my feelings toward this game aren't a good example of character development. I don't know what is, but you heard me. Tales of Grace's F is freaking awesome, except for the story. That That's still dumb. I really gotta make like a whole video on that because this story is dumb. Not even the characters can save it as hard as they try. They're funny and I absolutely adore their designs, but no matter how much you decorate a piece of cardboard, it's just a piece of cardboard. Again, like I said, I will go more into why I don't like this story another time, but just yeah, I'm not a fan. Let's talk about something else though. I did just say I love this game after all. While the graphics aren't the best, again, I love the design of the characters and world itself. Not to mention those spells and battle animations are straight wicked. Said spells are really over the top this time around, which can be a bit much at times, but I still enjoyed it. All right guys, we've just got some small fries, so we can take it easy. Oh, crap! The music is really, really good too. You've got some of the most memorable hype and fun tracks Matoi Sakuraba has had to offer, with of course a few exceptions here and there, but come on, this, this soundtrack's lit, you know it is. And if anything, the battle themes are always Gucci. Oh, speaking of battles, this is still debatably the best combat the franchise has to offer. In fact, no, this is my favorite battle system in the series. Every, I repeat, every character is fun to play as, everything is fast, there's such a heavy reliance on player skill, and it's challenging. I love that! All of these are what I consider to be factors in a perfect battle system, and oh, here they are! Crazy! Well, I'm not a fan of the Elith Mixer, and some of these bosses make me want to cry. <laughs> 
auto system still remains incredibly tight and fun to play. One of the best games are the multiplayer aspect too. Combine that with the great weapon refinery system, surprisingly fun dungeons, and good incentive to explore, the gameplay is what makes this game the great package it is. While it's a game that'll never get me to like its story or the majority of the characters no matter how much I want to, I love the aesthetic, there are a lot of great music tracks, and the gameplay is arguably the best in the entirety of Tales. I think that's justification enough for it being a good game when you say no. Well, it also has this mystic art. Let's begin. A man speaks with his back. There. That should be enough. <laughs> Tales of the Abyss? Only number six? That rhyme was on accident. But yeah, even I was shocked by my final order. Still, that's not to knock this game down at all. Tales of the Abyss is one of the most popular entries for a reason. That reason being, it's a bomb as heck game. With what many consider to be the best story in the franchise, it's definitely one of mine, as seeing the world, conflicts, and themes all work so well nearly the whole way through was a joy to me. And the characters are a prime example of showing how the writers for this series excel at characterization and development. Every single party member becomes a completely different person by the end of the narrative, and that made me fall in love with the game that much more. Everyone talks about him, but really, you gotta give credit to Luke who had such a complete and satisfying arc over the game. That's got nothing to do with me. I didn't know anything about that, and I didn't come here because I wanted to. Would you shut up? Oh my god, I hate Luke. He's such a prick. I may make mistakes, but I'm going to change. Yes, Luke! Yes! Oh, I love Luke. He's such a good boy. Life hits you fast, doesn't it? The game visually hasn't aged a day either. It still looks great, minus the awful world map. Expressive character models, cool battle animations, colors that really pop, so on so forth. And the soundtrack is dope. Lots of memorable tunes here, with that opening theme being a high key bop, despite no lyrics in the non Japanese version. Sounds great either way, and for a game having music being a big part of its story and lore, it'd be kinda awkward if we had a crappy soundtrack. I'm just saying. The gameplay is very solid for this series, being a great step forward after Symphonia, allowing for full 3D movement, a better skill system, tighter and more responsive controls, and overall making for a big step forward in terms of the series quality. The game is a bit on the easy side, not gonna lie, but it was enjoyable the whole way through, and I don't remember any moments of dumb frustration. Wait, no, there was one. Oh my gosh, just kiss already! They didn't kiss. You're serious? Tales of the Abyss is fantastic, with its story being the biggest defining factor. The gameplay does become a bit generic and even dated in some spots, and by all that I just mean the world map because it was awful. Overall, this game is great, and another excellent entry in the series. Nothing too terribly wrong with it, other than our glaring example to make it so low, it's just I like the other ones better. That's a very controversial statement I know, but I'm just gonna make it even more controversial by saying... I like Exilia more! Seriously! Tales of Exilia is such a strange beast of a game, but like Grace's F, I really learned to love it over the years. Even more so here because the story isn't stupid! <laughs> Talk about taking a plunge into the darker end of the tonal spectrum because I can't see crap in this narrative. While being darker doesn't automatically make it good, it's how they use these darker moments to make a very different, down-to-earth story about the harsh realities these worlds have to offer. The plot always engages me, I'm curious as to what will happen next, and while the game does take many twists and turns that aren't always the most built-up or consistent, I enjoyed it more as a character study, as the Tales games usually do. The main focus is on the themes of duty and one's purpose, so because of that, I can look past this villain coming out of nowhere or that plot device not making too much sense. Is it ignorant? Am I just wearing rose tinted glasses on my huge dumb head? Probably, but that's just how I like to look at the story, so I'm gonna go with that. Speaking of the characters, guys, this cast, this freaking cast, second only to another entry we've yet to see, but man, I really, really love the characters Exilia introduced to me. All their arcs are so good surrounding the themes to a T, Be because, you know, themes starts with I, I thought it was funny, all right? They're likable from the get-go while having tons of growth to be done, and honestly, that's the best way to write characters. Some people can't be bothered if they're established unlikable from the start, which is understandable, so I'm glad this game gets how to make you like someone while also showing that they have plenty of room for growth. While the graphics have aged just a little bit, the game still looks great due to the colors, environments, character designs, and those spells, which are absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and well, the soundtrack? Just... Mwah, so Gucci. Combat is also the perfect middle ground between the older games and the newer ones. That means it's really good if that wasn't clear. It's fast, fun, a bit easy, but complex enough to keep me interested the whole way through. If it were tougher, it'd be top 3 without question. Along with the overworld being a guilty pleasure of mine, there's so much I love about this game. It's just so easy to get sucked into this one, which is how this game managed to steal a spot in my top 5. A very memorable experience that could be seen as a mess, I won't lie, but it's super enjoyable nonetheless. And I love it the more I play 
play it. But here's a game that remained in my top 5 right from the get-go. Tales of Symphonia is what many consider to be the GOAT of the franchise, and who could blame them? Symphonia is so good, guys. Like, wow. Can you believe this released on the GameCube? Okay, just taking a look at the graphics, I guess you could. And they are a bit dated, however, I do have a soft spot for the game's visuals. And if they bother you, they did get cleaned up in an HD remake, but that doesn't run at 60 frames, and the original does, so... The story is without a doubt one of the best in the series. It's very fantasy JRPG-esque following many tropes and such, but as soon as these fun said tropes on their heads, I was hooked until the very end. The game does a great job at constantly building the world around you and keeping you invested in an incredibly interesting narrative. Even without the lovable and deep characters, this is some good stuff. But we're in a Tales game, so you get the best of both worlds. This cast is yet another excellent group of characters. Are you getting tired of hearing me say that? Because we can talk about Grace's F's cast if you want to. Oh, okay, that, that was me, I'm sorry. I really love this cast, and it's a shame that because of how the affinity system works, you don't get to learn everything about everyone in one playthrough. Just enough to pique your interest, as there's just so much to every party member. Special shoutouts to Zelos, again, because he's my favorite, and my son. The music is also incredibly memorable. I can hum so many of these tunes, and I love that I can say that. And shoutouts to this game having great dungeons. While it doesn't bother me that many of these games don't feature Zelda levels of puzzle solving in its dungeons, it's so nice that they went that extra step forward on this entry and I wouldn't mind seeing this level of dungeon design return. Every single one is interesting in some way and that level of care put into the game is something I can't help but admire. The combat system also remains very fun to do over and over again. While it's noticeably simpler than the games that expand on it, I still have so much fun slicing, spellcasting, kicking, and chopping enemies as a pink haired lolly girl with a freaking axe. This is the same game that commentates on racism, guys. A game that's one of the biggest GameCube games ever made, it remains a favorite out of a series that built off this game in many aspects. Respect your elders, kids. Because if you didn't, we probably wouldn't be getting such amazing children. Would it be grandchildren? Actually, if we're being more specific, it'd be great, 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 great grandchildren, and I ruined the flow of that analogy, so whatever. Number three is Tales of Berseria. I don't freaking care anymore. It's a stupid video. Why would Tales of Berseria is the latest entry thus far, and surprisingly one of the best. Like, guys, Berseria is so... So freaking good. Everything it does is a constant string of consistently great quality and there isn't much of anything I dislike without having to nitpick certain aspects. For one, I made a whole video on it, so obviously I love this story a ton. In fact, it's my favorite in the franchise. The progression, plot twists, foreshadowing, symbolism, build up, and radically different take on how to tell a story for the series, it was a booming success and I personally hope that future games follow in the footsteps of this narrative while understanding what made it so great to begin with, while improving on it too. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's really, really good. The characters are also incredibly different from the series norm, but thanks to the usual great writing and characterization, they end up being that much more memorable in another one of my favorite casts. With music pleasant on the ears thanks to having a mix of orchestra and rock in a few places, the game has a very distinct sound that makes me remember many of the terrific tunes as the kids say. And this game is just a better looking Zestiria, which was already a better looking Exilia. It helps that characters are a bit more expressive this time around, the entire game runs at 60 FPS baby! In terms of the gameplay, you've got a great balance of a world big enough to encourage and reward exploration while having a combat system faster paced and unique enough to stand out from the rest of the series. It excels at making you feel like the cool cat on the block the story's telling you that you are, ripping enemies apart to get more moves, stringing insanely strong attacks one after another, and bouncing off your teammates to wreck the house. The game just feels so satisfying like playing as the best girl should be. Velvet, a girl that could kill a man and look hot at the same time. While the combat is admittedly pretty easy, I mean, I only had trouble when there was the occasional one-on-one, -on -one, it's just like Exilia where I was having way too much fun to care. And while I do prefer a good challenge, I don't think this combat system was bad at all. Far from it. Combine all these together on top of many smaller aspects such as the voice acting, cuts and choreography, moments scattered across the narrative, so on and so forth, Berseria is a game I couldn't get enough of and stormed its way up my list. Just play this game, guys. It's so good. So um, I I wrote a I wrote a poem for this section. <clears throat> Roses are red, violets are blue. I really 
freaking love Tales of Exilia too. Exilia was great, a fun adventure the whole way through, albeit a little easy, with a story I can respect nowadays. Exilia 2? Exilia freaking 2? Not only does it give a much better understandable story, it improves the gameplay by making it harder and more in-depth, adds even more to the already heavenly soundtrack, but makes so many controversial additions to the core gameplay that I can't help but love and respect everything it does. Yeah, that last part was a bit strange, I know, but let's just roll with it and allow me to explain. The added character quests are the very reason that the Exilia cast is my second favorite. There's so much more fleshed out, developed even more, and these quests offer some of the better set pieces and bosses over the course of the game. The new characters are no slouches either. I respected Julius the whole way through, Elle was such a great motivator and fun character to be around, and Luger? Man, Luger just needs a break, guys. He gets some great development despite being a silent boy, and the more I dissect him, the more I realize that he's actually a great protagonist. The game looks identical, so I can say the same great things about this one, however what's different are the character designs, and I love them. They're all so much more mature looking and just better in general if you ask me. My boy Alvin rocking the facial hair, Gaius looks like a normal human being for a change, Jude killing the game with the anime protagonist haircut, and Leia looks cute as a button. As I stated earlier, the combat is so fun because not only are there so many added features, but there are nine playable characters and they're each fun to play as. There are only one or two bosses that annoy me in this game, and it's hard as crap, forcing me to master the mechanics this game taught me. In fact, the game as a whole forced me to love everything it tried to do. The death system nearly forced me to do side quests, explore the world, get down with the combat, everything. And you know what? It worked! I love every last inch of this game and could play it for an eternity for how much there is to do and discover. It's the kind of sequel that makes it harder to go back to the original for me, and I love that so much. Exilia 2 is just too good sometimes. What? Too much? I mean, if you don't like this punch, you could always go to the next entry. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Let's just go talk about number one. In a video by The Gaming Pilgrimage, he said that somewhere he run a person's first Tales game is usually their favorite. And while my first left one heck of an impression, I wanted to give every other entry a fair shot anyway. So I played the rest of the series going into each one with an open mind. But dude, nothing even got close to topping Vesperia. Was this the most obvious thing in the world? Yeah, probably. No, definitely, but oh well. Vesperia is probably the most consistently great game I've had the pleasure of playing, not only for mastering what makes a good game, but what makes a good Tales game. It's simply a masterpiece in every sense of the word. Vesperia is just... wow. And now I'm gonna explain why. Many games in this series have a slow start before getting to the good part and never stopping from there. But just 30 minutes or so in, I was already hooked with a story that never stopped twisting, turning, and keeping things interesting without coming too out of left field. And the biggest reason is thanks to not only my favorite cast in the series, but in all of gaming. Every single character has so much depth, personality, a great arc, likable from the get-go, anything you can think of to make them entertaining as well as enjoyable. Besides one or two minor characters I don't care for, it's unbelievably solid with my favorites being Yuri, Judith, Rita, Patty, Raven, Flynn, Estelle, Carol, and Rapid. What's that? I just listed the entire main party? Yeah. I did. Those of you who play the game can't even disagree with that, so suck it. Also, can we talk about how sexy this game looks? For a game that came out all the way back in 2008, it's crazy to think that this is still the best looking game by a long shot. The HD cell shading makes every character so much more expressive and easy on the eyes, along with beautiful environments, great battle animations, and gorgeous spells. Not to mention the phenomenal voice acting and memorable yet quality filled soundtrack with so many freaking bops. Exploring the world was so fun. This is genuinely one of the best world maps they've made in the series up to this point with so many areas to explore and discover on top of the dope as heck dungeons. Second only to Symphonia, I'd say. But more than anything, the combat is exquisite. Had to use a bougie word to give it justice. The skill system is excellent to help smoothen out progression and customization even more over the course of the game. Attacks are satisfying to pull off. The game encourages teamwork on top of making characters completely viable on their own for those one-on-one -on -one battles. Everyone's fun to play as and the game encourages bringing together different arts and attacks to make for hype as heck combos and battles overall. Combat is so freaking satisfying, having truly mastered what was previously given to us in Abyss, making for one of my favorites in the series as a whole. Everything here is top notch with some excellent bosses, top tier moments in the story, the stellar theme of justice which is my favorite in the series, there's so much to love about Vesperia. Every time I replay it, I find something new to fall head over heels for, and I've played this game a lot of times, so that's saying something. The OG version's great, the PS3 version's even better and Definitive Edition is gonna kick some serious butt. Do you guys understand why I'm so excited for this now? It's literally my favorite game and my favorite series and the best version imaginable like holy crap! 
Vesperia is a marvel and my favorite in the franchise without a single doubt in my mind. It's so near and dear to my heart, helped me fall in love with this series like nothing else, and I look forward to playing it even more for years to come. I feel so good talking about this, so I'm gonna calm down now because I'm probably scaring off my viewers, but man, I really, really love Tales of Vesperia. Oh boy, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I get carried away when talking about this game, but like, man, I just love it. I've calmed down and I wanna say I'm sorry for freaking out, but like not really because I love Vesperia too much. So that just happens, you know, when I talk about it. Anyway, I could talk about this game forever, but you know, I've got plenty more opportunities to talk about it. But until that time comes, mind if I plug some stuff? I really want to encourage you all to follow me on Twitter at ZaferRevo, as it's a great way to get quick updates on everything related to my channel and just some random opinions or thoughts. Also, if you want a more personalized experience in talking with me, I suggest joining my Discord server. It's a fantastic platform to talk to myself, online friends, and other viewers for the channel, so both links are in the description as usual. And that's about it. I don't want to be here forever talking to you guys, so my next video will be about the world ends with you final remixes new day, and after that it will be a video on Persona. I gotta stop talking though, like for real, because I gotta, you know, do the video pluggy thingy at the end so uh, i want to personally say thank you so much for watching you're all awesome and i love you all that's weird too bad i'll see you guys later